Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode here in my time at Sandrock. How are you people are doing? I hope they're doing well. We need to go to the Blue Moon Salon. Whoa, this is crazy tasty. Hey, waiter, come over here. Oh, Grace is back. Help? Last time I came, there was sand in the omelette, sand in my sandfish, heck, even sand in my yakmel milk. Did you get a new chef? Things around here are tasting good. <laughs> yeah, well, the application of Sandrock sand in meals is an ongoing and contentious debate. But don't you worry one way or the other. Just enjoy your meal. Mm. <laughs> hey, long time no see. So, what'll you have? The usual? In the flesh. Phew, it's a long story. Let's go somewhere to talk. Okay, cool. We're starting with Grace. That's a new tennis of event. That's uh, definitely not gonna change stuff or make stuff. I don't know. The operation I was a part of was successful. We managed to stop the Duvos infiltration in the Northern Ufala development plan. But it wasn't quite as straightforward as we anticipated. The enemy agents really fought back. Don't worry, though. Everyone they say died in the incident. Actually, we were given the opportunity to retire. They need to eliminate our false identities. Thus, I ended up taking the opportunity to do so. To retire, that is. I think I'm going to stay here from now on. So, uh, I can see you have questions. I prefer to call it a career change, but basically, yeah, it was about time. Things have changed. I'll always treasure my time at the agency, but I needed to do what would make me happy. And Sandrock makes me happy. Actually, I've always wanted this, in one way or another. I spent my working life protecting this kind of peaceful life. About time I get to enjoy it, right? Air is still warm and dry as ever. It's good to be back. But really, I came back for the people. Everyone here is special to me. Cool. <laughs> yes, this is the real me. Or technically, the real me never returned from a classified mission in the North. So to be more specific, this is the real me and the new me. They got me set up with a new ID. New name, new CV. I think they put me down as having studied in high wind. So maybe you can fill me in on what that might have been like when you get time? And well, I suppose I owe you a bit of explaining, huh? I mean, yeah, after everything we went through, you still don't even know my real name. I'll tell you everything. I promise. No plans. At least, not for a while. I've had enough plans for a lifetime in the service. Honestly, here, I felt more at home than I've felt anywhere else. And now that we're conspiracy free, I can hardly think of any place I'd rather be. I can get eight hours of sleep every night, spend time with you and the gang, go poking around the ruins whenever I want. Think Justice will still have a problem with the fry cook running the breach solo? And... I guess it always really bugged me how I could never get any of these darn recipes right. I think a part of me needed to come back here just to prove it to myself I can do this. Is that petty? Anyway, it's on my to-do list. I've already made a ton of progress. In fact, not one complaint. No major ones, I should say. There's so much I couldn't tell you. All of our letters are checked by the agency. I really couldn't write what I wanted to. It's much easier to talk to you now. All right, well, good catching up. Sorry I didn't come find you sooner, but this is where I'll be for the indefinite future. So let's hang out soon, whenever you want. Here's to the new Sandrock. No, oh, cool. Also, I want to remove that. Now to know if we can. Yeah, we can have this. Uh, yeah, that, that looks nice. 
without the hat. I believe that my character just needs that hat. Yeah, we cannot do this without the hat. So that's cool, and uh, yeah, we can actually put more stuff. I don't know if that's a bug in the quest, I don't know if that's um, like something, but I'm gonna put some more. I made some more stuff, so let's put what we can. And I believe I need to go grab the rest to put them in the in the top of the church. But yeah, we go, we're beautifying the city, you know, Sandrock has been through enough of stuff. So, yeah, let's go back. Okay, yeah. we have uh, billiards things like that. That, that looks awesome. Yeah, that looks nice. Then to see if we have any other emails or... Well, it doesn't look like we have. But uh, that's a lot of things that we got, as per usual. Never, we never, I never really updated much of the of the factory very slowly because it takes like motors and I have to go find them. Yeah, it takes a minute. It, it takes a minute. All right, last one. Last one. Nice. So is that what is for today? Do we have any commissions? Any cool commissions? If we have something, I will go grab it and probably move on. Like I need a little bit more content stuff to do. Like I wanna see where this will will descend. Yeah, that, that's that's enough of that. Uh, we have white copper. We have that. We have those. Definitely, we can make two more. Okay, so let me go do that. Then I'll be back. Alright, we are back. Did give the stuff. Do we have anything for today? Not really. Like, okay, so technically we need to upgrade this stuff make stuff or something like that like apparently okay we can make a furnace so i can do that we can make one of these which is something that looks interesting and we make one more of these sure we can do it okay okay so let's let those work and top our, our thing up uh, because i'm definitely it's definitely not in a good place but uh, yeah it doesn't look like i do have anything to do for today we could hang out with the people but i'm not gonna do it I'm not gonna do it back to sleep let's keep a few days Your birthday, prepare party. Okay, took effort, okay. Alright. Oh, everything looks truly wonderful. I never imagined our town being so beautiful again. Thank you all for the help. Certainly, you all know that as well as anyone. Well, I thank you for your modesty. I hope after this you'll have a bit of time to rest. To stop and smell the roses, so to speak. Nice! Then, our work is done! It's time to disband Operation Flowergate once and for all. 
No way. Plan till I die, Minister Burgey Boy. Plan till I die. Oh, I mean, sure. We'll come up with some new organization when the need comes. But I think we've flowered this town up as far as it'll go. I hate to admit, you might be right. You know, the new landscaping does call for constant upkeeping. Ah! We've got to be prepared. Emergency meeting at the flower cave, stat! Bridgie boy! Uh, okay! Those two? <laughs> Glad they're on our side. Yeah, me too. You know, I'm just real glad the whole plan went off without a hitch. Not so surprising, considering all the wonderful people that worked on this. Coming from Highwind, I'm really surprised at the concentration of talented people in this town. And look at you! You've really shaped up into quite the Sandrock legend. Although, maybe I should have seen it coming. Even when we were kids, you'd be so reliable. Remember when we used to snag honey out of beehives? If you didn't always stand watch for the bee swarm, our faces might look a bit different right now. Oh, really? <laughs> well, everyone gets their start somewhere. I was trying to give you credit. <laughs> but sure, I lost count of how many times we had to scrounge together pocket change to get you that lotion with the picture of the bee on it. Oh, be careful, pain relieving ointment. <laughs> that was it. Sounds like you two got into all sorts of trouble growing up. Hey, is it me? Or is Big Tree on Mount Roxand looking a bit different? Ooh. Mama Tree! Let's head over and check it out. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. Well, model, we've done it. Oh, if you could see our boy now. Hey, Pa. Looks like others also noticed. Hello, everyone. Woohoo! You saved the tree! Looks just like it did 30 years ago. Yeah, it's a miracle. A scientific miracle! A miracle performed by us! Yeah, natural healing processes, etc. I'm not even sure anymore. I know. You worked very hard to make this happen. You didn't have to, but I am eternally grateful. Being here with you guys for so long, this became our struggle too. Wow, I'd forgotten what this view could look like. My ma used to take me up here from time to time. After her disappearance, this tree died, and I never wanted to come up here again. But I guess everything turned out for the best. Martel would have been very proud of what you accomplished, Zeke. Nearly 70 years of history has all led to this. This is only the beginning. We made Sandra green again. We can do anything! Hey, Pa. Come look at this. Pa? Pa! Pa, are you all right? Oh, I'm sorry. The journey up here seems to have really taken it out of me. Glad you're all right. Why wouldn't I be? I'm still fit as a fiddle. Brr, do you all feel that? Suddenly got a bit nippy up here. The wind blows. A gentle wind that once would have prophesied ruin, now soothes me. Hey, that's... Got caught in the leaves. Could have gone straight through. Okay, what is that? It's Ma's letter from your scrapbook. The one that got blown off in the sandstorm. For it to end up all the way up here. Pa, we... We can put it back when we get home. Open it up when Ma comes back. Like you said. No, it's time. I've known for some time now. Hmm. Oh. Ah. 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 Ah
She wanted me to take you, Zeke, and ride down to High Wind. What? what? If you're reading this letter, I bet my life on Sandrock and lost. I failed Akil. I failed Theo. I failed Sandrock. And worst of all, I failed you, Mort. We've lost too many good people, and now there are none left. But our story doesn't have to end like this. Take Zeke East. Find a new life. Survive. I haven't lost everything if I know that you've made it. I can rest easy knowing you're safe. So, please, don't throw your life away chasing this foolish woman's foolish dream. Let Sandrock go. You... you never opened it? Hmm... Would you have gone? If you'd known? I... would have. I came here a traveler, like everyone back then. I only stayed because of her. She inspired many of us. Her dream became our dream. And I loved her. More than life itself. I would have done anything. I... when she disappeared, I couldn't believe it. Why would I? She spent months in that desert every year. I believed she would return, so... No, I did not read the letter. You carried the torch for her, Trudy. Without question, and nearly met the same fate. Oh. Hey, Ma's spirit was stronger than her body could ever be. She gave us hope when there was none. Her memory kept us all alive, kept us fighting. There was only one thing she loved more than Sandrock. It was you and me, Pa. Hmm. You all were right. It... it is quite a view. Uh, the wind's picking up. Come on, Mort. Let's get you down the mountain before you catch a cold. If it's all right, I'd like to stay a little longer. I've got him. You all go on ahead. All right. Maybe better give him some space. Don't stay up here too long, all right? Look at us. A couple of old fools. Pretty good. For a couple of fools. Her dream. It came true after all. All because of one stubborn, stubborn old man. Yep. Hey, you think that was Martel's... Spirit, who sent more the letter just now? It's nice knowing that someone like Martel's up there watching over us. The things are not always as they seem. That's a lesson we learn time and time again in Sandrock. In my book, both Mort and Martel are both heroes, more than ever. Everyone will want to know the truth. But for now, let's just give them some peace. Good. And let's all get back to our greener. Cool. And we have a uh, thing. What is that? That uh, looks intriguing. Probably it's Grace that wants to hang out. Oh, it's that. Oh, God. Okay. I was just thinking of coming to see you. The sandworm terrarium you made me is so amazing. The cultivated worms have managed to increase the soil quality so fast. I even buried them alongside the crops, causing a yield increase. Even some really picky plants thrived. I think the worms could be a key element in normalizing the environment around here once the trees are in place. I mean, we can't always go around watering the place with algae juice. It needs to be self-sustainable. Along with the worms, 
Zeke thinks that we should be introducing more plant species into the desert. So, that's what we've been working on. If everything goes smoothly, we'll be able to increase the plant variety around Sandrock tenfold. It's so exciting. Oh, I almost forgot. Here are some crops I managed to grow using the soil from the terrarium. Mm, cool. Raspberries and caltrops. Cal cantaloop. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, we'll learn how to do the level 3 planter. No, that's cool. We we'll know how to do it. Not bad. But uh, yeah, Sandro has come quite far. What is that? It's a. Uh, do we have a quest or it's just. Us? It's our player character. That, that's cool. But we can go again to the next day to see if we have anything else or we have something to wait. And we have water. Cool. Let's go place a few of the machines. I don't know how many we have, but. So that makes it five. Yeah, the other ones will take a minute to be made. Which is cool. So let's put them aside, go next day again. And uh, see if there is more to this story. Like so far we have pretty much automated a good portion of the stuff. So we don't really need to go that much hard of resource gathering. Or play with so much. We can, but... Okay, we have a free side meeting. Uh, apparently, cool. From Trudy. Okay, tomorrow. Interesting. Alright, we do have a few stuff in. Okay, let's. See, this is what I meant, that uh, we have a few people, a few things to see here. Let's go see them. And we need that and uh, that. Nice. So we have five of these, four of these, and for that we can add two more for good for us. Let's go check that first here. Well, oh. I look, there's the builder. Come join us. Mia needs your help. Well, you know how I've been helping out at the moisture farm. But with the greenification of Sandrock almost complete, I'm going to have more free time. So, I was thinking, maybe it's time for me to start something of my own. I want to settle down in Sandrock, just like you have. But I'm still not sure what that something should be. Mian told me to follow my dreams and do what my heart desires. You know, I've always had a passion for tending to various plants in the garden since I was a kid. So... That's an interesting idea, but it might take time. Ooh, I could open a shop! But what would I sell? Gardening tools? That's perfect! And you can also sell flowers! You know, I've always wanted to be a shop owner too. When I was a kid, I used to dream of opening a bakery or a florist shop. Funny how life turned out. I became a builder like the rest of my family. While I might not be skilled at growing plants, I love having them to decorate my house. I'm sure there are more people like me in Sandrock, and we don't have a store catering to that yet. So I think that's a brilliant idea. I see. Selling flowers makes sense. It's easier than dealing with just gardening tools, which I have to import and find storage space for. But with flowers, I can grow them myself. Perhaps Zeke would even let me use a plot in his moisture farm. But how can I afford to rent a shop? I know I could ask my family for support as a last resort, but I'd prefer to figure it out on my own. Really? Really, really? You're the best! <laughs> yeah, sure. Quite awesome. Yeah, that's something. nothing. But don't now. Let's think about the location. The main street doesn't have much space for a new shop. 
And if we set up too far from the town center, it might be inconvenient for people, especially if they want to buy those heavy gardening tools. I have a balcony in front of my workshop that's currently free to use, but it's not big enough for a full shop. What if we just set up a flower display rack there? Ah, a display rack with a canopy! That sounds about right. It'll look lovely on my balcony and provide some extra shopping space. By the way, I still have some extra funds left after donating to the Sandrock School. So I thought you could have it. You know, it's like an investment. Thank you. But what the Builder has offered is more than enough. But it's just that I'd really love to be a part of this. I mean, I told you I dreamed of opening a shop when I was a kid, and I wasn't joking. I just never got the chance. That's why I want to invest in the business. I thought you could use some extra goals to order different flowers from other places and attract more customers. And I could help you with whatever you need help with. I just, I kind of wish to run the business with you. Is that a possibility? Ah, I see. Of course. I'd love to be business partners with you, Mian. It would be a dream come true for both of us. Really? Thank you so much, Nia. Just tell me what you need me to do. While I may not be an expert in planting, I'll try my best. I'll even ask Zeke to teach me some techniques. That's all right. We'll figure out the planting part together. First, let's come up with a name for our business. Even if it's just a few racks, it's our special place. Any ideas? I thought so too. I want the name to represent both of us in some way. Hmm, but Nian, 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 they don't sound very catchy. <laughs> How about we put your name first? We could call it Mi Mini. Because it's small and cute. Plus, people will immediately know it belongs to you and me. That's brilliant. I love it. How about Mini Botanica? It reflects that we sell not only flowers, but also plants and everything related to gardening. It's settled then. Let's name it Mini Botanica. We have a name and a location. Now I need to prepare some flowers for sale. And of course, the flower display rack. Oh, that would be so special. You two grew up together, and now you're literally helping Mia build her business. I'll help with growing the flowers. I'm not an expert, but I'll do whatever Nia asks me to do. Don't worry, you'll get the hang of it in no time. Okay, I'll design a recipe for the display rack. And I'll ask around and see what people want to buy from our shop and then get the flower seeds. Sounds like a plan. Thanks for your help. We'll send you what you need tomorrow. Goodbye. See you. Okay, so we became business partners. With a bit of cut scene in this episode, which is intended. That, that was my purpose, actually. <laughs> to get through those cutscenes. Why not? Because they're awesome. And uh, oh, do we have uh, in the Pablo's we have uh, cutscene. Darling, you're here. Oh. I knew you'd remember. I've already finished designs for two collections. I'll give you a sneak preview. I designed two sets of clothing, some formal wear and swimwear. I've made more than ten sets for each design. The scene, a rapidly changing sand rock. Blooming flowers, celebrations all around. The people, still dressed in their boring clothes. We need some aesthetics. We lack diversity. We need a breath of new, fashionable air. I never thought this day would come, but I finally think the time is right. I am going to put these on the catwalk. I want to host a fashion show. As I was drawing them, I could picture it. The lights, the gasping faces, the stunning designs, and me at the back needling the final touches on a hypnotizing piece. It will be a two-day affair, each day focusing on one series. This was, I am hesitant to admit, in fact, Trudy's idea. She was more than supportive, and believed one day to simply be too short. Now, what else is needed? First of all, clothing production. I am but the designer. I do not possess the skill to create these magnificent pieces. Ha! Huh, I can see your expression. No, I do not need you to make them. I have already asked Vivi, and she has agreed to work with me. Now, the issue of the venue. Trudy believes that the show could bring in tourists, and offered to host it outside the city hall. But the construction of the stage will be your piece de resistance. With Trudy's support, honestly, 
This has grown bigger than I could have imagined. I even have my models, and they love the designs. Heidi's already made a diagram for you. You just need to make it and give it to me. That's not a problem, right? You're quite the go-getter, aren't you? It's positively charming. Well, I just have to prepare the clothes, organize the order of the show, then, when you have built the stage, please give it to me. Believe me, Sandrock will soon be the cosmopolitan hub of the free cities. Cool. We need to make a artwork. We have a, we have a runway show. That's cool. And uh, yeah, we're gonna put that in a bit. We need to see what else do we have here as a thing. Okay, we have something here in the in the civil corp. Okay, probably Grace. Oh, Miguel. I've been in contact with the Alliance Council, and I just can't, in good faith, recommend anything other than the full extent of the law. Transfer to the Atara Maximum Security Prison. You betrayed us and have shown no sign of remorse. I will contact the authorities and organize the transport. I accept all punishment, truly, and will abide accordingly. Then I will keep you informed of the date of your departure. I just can't understand it. Why? It's no excuse. But I did what I believed was right. But this town, everyone living here, after all you did for us, everything you said in your sermons, you kept us safe, your guidance. I even trusted you to teach my daughter. <laughs> I thought you cared. I truly do. Please, don't give me that. No. You said that the water was a cover for their true intentions. I have been taken for a fool. Okay. This I realize now more than ever. I truly thought Duvos wanted the same thing as me. That they were on the right side of history. But their actions do not correlate to the proclamations they gave me. Recently, I have been grasping at something, anything, that would validate my actions since I have been in Sandrock. The more I searched, the more I came to only one truth. There was nothing. My handlers were simply telling me what they wanted me to believe. I must have been simply a diversion. If I could have pushed everyone out of Sandrock, and Dubos could excavate the ruins in secrecy, my arrest threw a proverbial wrench into the works, and it appears to have pushed their hand. I was then left to rot. They never cared about me. And when I was of age, I left to study in mating. My family were believers in the light, and I dreamed of spreading the word. I always feared the day of calamity. Feared the light being extinguished once more. I quickly befriended Matilda. She was older than me, working as a tutor in the guided study sessions. I remember when I first met her when I attended her session the first time. She was helping a group of students with their questions on faith. She was kind, understanding. Whenever I disagreed with the doctrine of the church, she listened. Later, I started to feel that the teachings were not enough. I did not suspect Matilda to be anything other than a devout follower of the light. Her allegiance was as much of a surprise to me as to you. Her study group set her apart from the other tutors. She was loved, particularly by the staff. Somewhat of a teacher's pet. She was bright-eyed and optimistic. A perfect cover in retrospect. Her views stood opposed to mine. I am somewhat more pessimistic about human nature. Allowing humans freedom to pursue their vanities is what led to the day of calamity. Those around me in the church did not take the teaching seriously. Even the deacon. It was as if they had forgotten the sins of our forefathers. During my studies, I became depressed. I drifted further from the teachings.
became isolated and found myself more radical. Then an agent from Dubos made contact. There were things they told me that Dubos would regulate technology. Everything I heard aligned with my beliefs. They wanted structure. They wanted to ensure no one else ever lost their lives. They wanted to ensure the safety of humanity. I see now in retrospect, Matilda used my grief against me. She was conditioning me. She must have told an agent of my wavering faith and guided their hand from the background. While I was studying in Nadi, my town was destroyed. I'm from Dos. I'm a child of the lost city. Our existence was always a delicate balance. Being a town skirting the border of the peripheries, we were aware of the dangers, but largely went unbothered. As I went to study in Nady, I bid my hometown farewell, but kept in regular contact. It may surprise you, but I took part in many of the onboarding activities and was a strong advocate for the church school. It seems strange to reflect on that now. During my studies, Doss was attacked by a creature from the peripheries. It happened overnight, without warning. Everyone in town was killed. My parents. My brother. You cannot imagine. My entire town destroyed by a monster in the blink of an eye. Just thinking about what my people went through. Is truly harrowing. The depths of despair cannot comprehend what my family endured. I pray that it was quick. When the news was announced at school, I felt everyone's eyes on me. They were fixed, filled with an empty pity. I fell into a trance, simply glided through the halls, unable to process what had happened. I needed to talk, to confront it. Where were the rangers or the civil court? How did we not see it coming? How? How could the Alliance let this happen? The questions burned into my mind. I sought answers, but people avoided me. Said I was too intense. Within a week, people were laughing again. Enjoying. They'd all forgotten already. Countless lives lost, yet they returned to their lives again as if nothing had happened. Everyone simply avoided me further, except for Matilda. She was. I fell into the darkness. I sunk into the questions that were burning on my tongue. How could the Alliance let this happen? How are we allowing the sins of our forefathers leave us in ruin? How could the free city simply abandon us? I expected a rescue. I expected the rangers to search and destroy that monster from the peripheries, but... No. They saw it as a lost cause and moved on. My family were not even buried. They were left there for the wilds to consume. It was then that my heart was blackened to the Alliance. That my thoughts started to drift. I was vulnerable. I was lost. I was found by Matilda and led astray. She would encourage me to think independently, to question myself. She said my fears were valid and that I was a fiercely independent thinker. And while she did not agree with me, she valued my beliefs. I now believe she was taking note of my doubts and behind closed doors crafting a narrative that reciprocated my beliefs. A narrative she then passed on to handlers. It was no mere coincidence that I was sold a beautiful vision of Dubos. I should have seen this sooner. But I was blinded by their words. It answered all of my questions. It appears so. All that I took for Dubos ideals were simply my own being reflected back to me. And that much. What I have done for Sandrock is unforgivable. It 
It is only now that the blinds have been pulled back. I must face my actions head on. I still believe that we as a species need to control our desires to pursue unfettered technology. DOS must not happen again. However, that does not excuse what I did. I have wronged the people of this town and the Free City. I must accept penance for my actions. I must take this as a time for personal growth. Thank you for coming to see me on this time. Was a lot. That was a lot, people. At least we see what Miguel had been through. It was like his origin story, I believe. That was a different vibe from what we have used to so far, which is nice. But though he did pass the time quite a bit, so we're gonna end the episode right here, and we still have one more thing to check, which is here i believe so this is where we go in the next episode uh, remind you to subscribe and like and see you next time have a great day people bye